Let's take a look at how we can perform exact match lookups using Power Query. So here I have a sample data set with approximately a thousand records in it, and we've got date, product ID, quantity, and unit price. Now over here I've got another table which has those product IDs and the brand and the class. And what I'd like to do is back on the sales data sheet to take these product IDs, locate them in the product ID column of that second table, and then return the brand name and the class name as two new columns in this first table. Now you can do this a lot of ways in Excel. You can do VLOOKUPs, you can do index matches, you can do XLOOKUP. But I want to do this with Power Query because even though we're doing this in Excel and the data is in Excel, what if the data was someplace else? What if it was coming from say a website or a PDF or one database pulling data and another database pulling different data? So let's see how we could do this in Power Query. If you'd like to follow along, please be sure to download the files from the link in the video description where you can either just look at the finished product or follow along with me from the starter file. The first thing we need to do is bring these two tables into Power Query. Looking at the table design ribbon, this first table is called sales data and this second table is called B and C for brand and class. So with my cursor in the brand and class table, I'll go up to data and select from table range. So now that we've brought this into Power Query, I'm going to do a close and load, close and load two, and I'll set this up as a connection only query because I don't want to reproduce another table output from this table. It's strictly an input table. Now let's go to sales data, do the same thing from table range. And so now we have the sales data in Power Query. These two queries are going to act as feeder queries for my output. So they're both set up as connection only. I'm going to hide this panel for a moment. Now one very popular way to pull the brand and class information from that other table is to just do a merge. So with my transaction table, my sales table, I'm going to go up to merge queries. Sales data will be my main table that I'm going to keep everything from. And then B and C is the lookup table that I want to return brand and class information. It's the product ID column that is the connected tissue between these two tables. So with those two fields selected, I'll hit OK. This brings in a column of nested tables. If I peek inside of one of those tables, I can see the product ID, the brand, and the class. So now it's just a matter of expanding the tables to pull out that brand and class information. So we'll go to expand table, deselect product ID, deselect column prefixing, hit OK, and now we have the brand and class information. Now that is probably the simplest way to perform a lookup. But what if you don't wish to perform a merge operation? Let's look at how we could solve this problem with something more akin to a VLOOKUP in Excel. So I'm going to delete those last two steps. Now we're back to where we started. We'll open up the Queries panel. I don't want to alter either of these two tables. So here's a tactic for when you want to do a little experimenting and you don't want to risk corrupting the original information. In this empty area on the left, I'm going to right click and say New Query, Other Sources, Blank Query. So here's a query that does nothing. In the formula bar, I'm going to type equals and then point to the sales data query. When I hit enter, now this query just picks up where the sales data query left off. So whatever sales data showed last, that's the first thing that query one will show. Now I'm going to rename this discovery because what we're going to do is we're going to perform a lookup using a discovery column. Let's hide this panel. What I mean by that is I want to discover where the product ID for a single transaction in this table is located in the product ID column of this table. So if I'm looking up product 110, I find you on the first row. But if I'm looking up product ID 183, I'm going to find you on the 18th row. Now one thing to keep in mind, Power Query starts counting at zero. So if I do discover this 110, it's actually going to have been discovered on row zero and 183 will have been discovered on row 17. So you just have to remember this little mental subtract one offset. So back to the transactional table, we're going to create a new column over here that takes the product ID, locates it in the other table, and just tells me where it found it in that other table. It's not bringing back the brand or class information. It's just telling me which row in that table the product ID was discovered. So we'll go up to add column, custom column. For the name of this custom column, we'll call it locate ID. And the function we're going to use is a list position of function. Think of this as similar to the match function in Excel. It finds an item in a list and then just tells you where in that list it was found. The first argument for this is a list that you're trying to search. That list is in the query called BNC, but which column in the BNC query do I wish to search? So in square brackets, we want to search the product ID column, comma, what value are you looking for in that product ID column? 
Well, it's going to be the product ID field of this table. So whichever record I'm currently processing. Close parentheses, hit OK. And here we see the location at which that product ID was discovered. So remember, product ID 110 is on the first row of the table. Power Query starts counting at zero, so it found it in the zeroth position. Product ID number 168 was found on row 13 of the table, but because starting at zero, it returns a location of 12. So again, this is exactly what a match function would do in Excel. So what we can now do is do the equivalent of an index function of Excel to say, let's go to the nth position in a table's column and return whatever we see there. So using 110 as our example, it's in the zeroth record position. We want to scan the brand name column and return whatever's in the zeroth position, in this case, Iowa. If we were scanning the class name column and we wanted to return from the zeroth position, we will return the word regular. So brand name and class name are the columns we're going to scan to return something from. Let's go up to custom column. The name of this column will be called brand. And just like the index function, what column do I want to bring something back from? This is where we go to the BNC query, and we're going to scan the brand name field. Now, which row in the brand name field do we want to return something from? We need to give it a list position, and lists are always contained in curly braces. So the list position, let's move this out of the way, is whichever number is being observed in this locate ID field. So I'll just double click locate ID, close the list position. So now just like an index function in Excel, scan this particular column and bring back something from this particular position. Hit OK. And now we've retrieved all the brand names. Now while I'm here, the data type for this is the any data type. And this really should be text and I could just go ahead and change it to a text data type. But one of the things that I don't like to do in my queries is to have little small and consequential steps like data type changes. So I like to incorporate the data type change directly into the lookup. So we can see that the data type that that step invoked was a type text. I'm gonna copy that. Let's delete that change type step. And I'll just go right into the M code and just before the close parentheses comma, and then I'll put that data typing declaration. Go ahead and press enter. And now I've set the data type at the same time that I actually performed the lookup. Now let's do the same thing for the class. We'll go to custom column. The name of this new custom column will be called class and the formula will be to perform that index operation where we look at the brand and class query and specifically the class name field and then in curly braces, let's move this over, whatever is actually being denoted by this locate ID field. So we'll give the locate ID a double click, close our curly brace, hit okay, and now we've returned the classes. I'll do the same data typing trick I did with brand. I'll go just before the close parentheses, comma, and paste that type text declaration. Hit enter. Now at this point, you don't really need the locate ID field anymore. If you want to throw it away, right click remove, and now you're just left with the brand and the class. So this does the same thing as merging the tables. Nothing wrong with merging tables, it's just another way to solve a problem. So if you ever need to do a lookup operation, but you don't want to do a merge, here's your answer. I'm going to remove that last step just so we can get that locate ID column back. Whenever I'm developing a more complex solution, I like to build the solution in phases. So that way I'm not working on too many problems at the same time. So we did the lookup operation here, but then we performed the retrieval operation in this next column. Let's see if we could combine those two steps into a single step and not have to have the locate ID field. So I'll open up my queries, go to discovery, right click duplicate, and we're gonna call this one no discovery. So let's delete every step except the source step. So this time, instead of doing a list.position of separate from the return step, in other words, instead of doing the match function separate from the index function, let's do the index and the match function together. Let's perform the return and the discovery at the same time. So we'll go up to add column, custom column. We'll call this new column brand. And if this was Excel, here's where we would do the index. So we're gonna take the B and C query, square bracket, scan the brand name field, and now let's give it the curly braces to define our return position. This will be where the equivalent of the match function takes place. So this is going to be the list position of function. List.position of says let's go to the B and C query, square bracket, and we're going to scan the product ID field, comma. What are we looking for? Well, remember before, when we were performing the locate ID, we were searching for whatever was in the product ID field. So we'll give that a double click. Close parentheses, close curly brace. So now we've essentially combined those two separate steps from earlier into one. We'll hit okay. And now I was able to bring back the brand information without creating the intermediary locate ID step because it's all done at the same time. 
So we can see in the formula bar, if this was Excel doing an index match, this would be the part for the index, and this would be the part for the match. My data typing is not what I would like it to be, so I'm going to expand my formula bar. This way I can click before the close parentheses and do the same thing I did earlier, comma, and then set the data type, type text, hit OK. And now I set the data type at the same time I perform the lookup. Let's do this again for the class, create a custom column, let's call it class. And now let's do the first part of the index where we search the B and C query, but this time it's going to be the class name field, then in curly braces, the return position, this will be the list position of function, which is going to search the B and C query, product ID field, comma, and I'm looking for something that's coming from my own product ID field, so I'll give that a double click. Close parentheses, close curly brace, hit OK, and now I've returned the class information. Let's add our data type by going right into the M code just before the last close parentheses, comma, type text, enter. So if you're not in the position to perform a merge operation, but you want to perform the equivalent of a VLOOKUP or an index match from Excel, here's how we can do that by pointing to a column from another query and then using the list.positionOf function to scan and return something from that column. Remember to download these files from the link in the video description so you can look at the solution file with all of the work done or have followed along with me as I perform the solution. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.